Oh, yes, we have made it. It is finally NFL Draft Day. This is part of the NFL season coming about. We have the draft and all the exciting things that comes from that. Then you have a lot of uh, free agency moves that typically come as a result of what teams did or didn't get. And so we are coming. Everything is churning along to the NFL season. Guys, let's talk about this as well as football cards. Stick around. to all my sports card collectors, investors, all of my collectibles friends. It is another day, but it's a big one. It's NFL Draft Day, and we're going to talk about football and football cards. If you're new here, please hit that subscribe button, the likes, the notifications, all the things. I'm also on Instagram at Sports Card Dad and Twitter, the Sports Card Dad. All right, so as we dissect this draft, and I'm a huge New Orleans Saints fan, as you can see by the vintage pendant. Pennant. Um, we are excited to have the 16th and the 19th pick. We've got a second rounder. I believe we've got a third rounder. Usually the Saints trade out of all their picks and they usually have like one or two or whatever. What I'm really hoping for for the Saints, just having a lot of picks up front, I'm looking for a 2017 type draft. I don't know if we'll ever be able to recreate a draft like that. That was where we took Marshawn Lattimore at 11. We took Ryan Ramchek at 32. I'll Pro Bowl right tackle. We took um, Marcus Williams, safety in the third round. We took Trey Hendrickson in the third round, who is now a 10-plus sack guy with the Bengals, but played great for us for the Saints as well. And then we took Alvin Kamara in the third round. It was just, and then more. There, there was just a ton of amazing players that were pulled out of that. And so my hope for the Saints is to sit and make their picks and heck, even trade back, which the Saints never do. But if you have the ability to trade back, pick up another pick or two, and you still have a lot of guys on the board you like, then let's do it, guys. Let's do it. Let's pick up a bunch of players. We've got holes to fill on the team. So when I look at mock drafts, and I've looked at a bunch of different ones, what strikes me, and I think the thing that I'll be watching is a lot of guys at the top of the first round, it's a lot of guys in the trenches. And as usual, you know, I mean, those are always kind of the spots. They're, they're not the sexiest picks. Everyone wants a QB or a high-profile running back or receiver. But in reality, you need those guys in the trenches or none of the other stuff works. So you've got tackles at the top of the draft. You've got defensive ends, defensive tackles. All the big guys from Georgia are up there. The big guy out of Michigan is up there. You know, you've got a lot of trenches guys. Now, we, this is not considered to be a strong QB class, um, but there are three, four, five names in there, QB names that are potential first rounders. And my huge hope is, is that the Saints do not reach on a quarterback in the first round. I don't want them to trade up for really anybody. I think this is considered to be a pretty stacked draft for skill players. And frankly, the Saints need to reload on skill players. We were really, really short on wide receiver. And this is considered to be a pretty depthly depth. There's a lot of depth at wide receiver. I'm just making up stuff. And so for this particular draft, I want to see our teams going to reach on quarterbacks. Now, granted, some of these quarterbacks might be the next Joe Montana, the next Tom Brady. We have no idea. But the fact that you're just kind of rolling the dice on a lot of these guys, and even guys that are considered high profile, top prospect QBs, the majority of them don't work out or they become average players. I just don't like using, unless you've got the first overall pick, it's a consensus number one where, you know, you got a guy that you really feel good about, but, but even then there's a ton of risk taking QBs in the top five picks. So anyway, my point is I don't want to take a quarterback. I want to roll with Jameis Winston, but I hope that teams reach on quarterbacks, trade up into those first 15 picks to get a quarterback so that these really good skill players and maybe some of these guys in the trenches, some of the big fellas fall to us at 16 and 19. And whichever team that you're you're watching, you know, I guess I'd like to hear your thoughts in the comments. Who do you hope your team picks up? Put the team you like, put the put the type of player that you want. I want to hear that in the comments. Now, what does it mean for football cards? Now, for this is kind of the struggle because we still don't have the main cards from Panini. We talked about this in a video a few days ago. We're still waiting on Prism, Optic, Select, and these are kind of a mainstay for modern, ultra-modern football cards. This is what people are looking for, and we don't have those cards from last year's draft class. We don't have Trevor Lawrence, Prism rookies, or Justin Fields, Select rookies, etc. So we're still waiting on all that stuff. We're going to have a new round of a draft class to where we're waiting on those cards. The one thing I do think, though, especially because of this delayed release, is normally you kind of have an NFL offseason 
offseason where it's like, oh, there's some buying opportunities here and there. For certain players, of course, there's always buying opportunities because the reality is is that we don't know which QBs are going to show out next year, and there's a ton of talent at QB. So you could take a flyer on some some. I, I, wanna, I don't want to say random because there's so many good QBs out there that maybe had an offseason last year. They were injured. Their team wasn't good. That will be good this year, and their cards will see a bump. But it's all like, which horse are you going to pick? You know, that's always the tricky part is there's no rhyme or reason to a lot of it. And in football, you do have a lot of injuries. You know, even if you have a quarterback that's fantastic playing great, if he loses his skill players or his top left tackle or whatever, season can get derailed. So football is really kind of a sports betting game when you're when you're looking at, at ultra modern cards. I am a big time vintage football card collector. I love the vintage stuff. And also I should put in there, so vintage, some of the older stuff, but also like 80s. The 80s football stuff I really like. And then, of course, you got cool 90s inserts of, you know, Hall of Famers and so forth. Tom Brady cards, I think, too, are going to be really interesting to watch. They've already, they've been expensive for a while. The guy said he's coming back. He's unretiring. I want to see what his stuff does as we get into the season. Does Tom Brady finally struggle a little bit? You know, this is a guy that he's 45 and he's going to be 46. At some point, his play is going to start to fall off. It's just going to happen. And we don't know if he's going to be 45. 46 or if he's going to be 55 when that happens obviously he keeps himself in great shape the bucks again come with a loaded team he's not joining a bad team now what i will say is the bucks offensive line is a little bit suspect right now they lost a couple guys on the line i assume that in the draft they are going to try to address the offensive line specifically for tom brady even though he's a master at getting the ball out quickly you know i I assume he'll probably have gronk back but gronk has been injured you know over the last year last year he was injured a lot and his body has been beat up over time that guy has taken some serious punishment he's amazing one of the all-time great tight ends uh but he is i think as well even though he's 30 31 kind of winding down i don't know if he's going to play a lot more years he's only playing because tom's playing in my opinion. So we'll have to kind of see what happens there. But as far as football cards and pricing and all that stuff, I really like the vintage stuff. It doesn't get it anywhere near as much love as vintage baseball or basketball, but there's a lot of really cool vintage football and a lot of legends where the rookie cards, when you look at them, even in some of the higher grades, still fairly affordable. So that's where I will continue to target. I'm always excited, though, leading up to the season, these young players, we are going to finally see some of these older QBs phase out and eventually we will see this next crop of QBs and it's led by Mahomes and Herbert and and Trevor Lawrence and Justin Fields. Of course, not all of them are going to work out, but the point is you have a ton of young QB talent in the NFL and it's going to, you know, the the cream will rise to the top, you know, the Joe Burrows. Um, You've got just a lot of guys out there that are exciting. So it's hard not to be excited about the NFL season coming. The draft is kind of that first part of it. We'll see some free agent signings on the back, on the back after that draft. The Saints, we've got guys we're kind of, I think we're we're trying to sign, but we don't want to pay top dollar. Jarvis Landry, Tyron Matthew, these are guys that are kind of on the radar. So let me know your thoughts in the comments. Who's your team? Who do you want to see them pick tonight? And what do you think just in general? Football cards, I'd like to hear your thoughts. And where are you targeting? Are you looking for the Herberts and the Mahomes type stuff? Or are you looking more the 80s or the vintage? Tell me where you're at with football cards. It's a football card day. All right, have an amazing rest of your day, guys. Stay healthy, stay awesome, and I will talk to you again later. 